Okay, so today we're going to look at properties of gases. Um, I want you guys to have kind of an idea of what types of things we can expect from gases as we're working with them so that we can make assumptions about them. We're, we're going to look at postulates and we're going to look at just general properties of them, starting with compressibility. What's compressibility, you ask? It's the ability to squeeze a container and compress and push the gas molecules together. So if you think about a syringe, which I don't have any here still, if you think about a syringe and you depress the little uh, the plunger part, you're compressing, you're closing the gases, you're squeezing the gases together. So you have the ability, you're able to squish the gases together. So maybe draw a little picture of like a, a syringe that's closed at the bottom. You're depressing the little these particles together and close the squishy particles together. Okay, so there's there's a volume that they take up, but you can compress them and squish them down, squeeze them closer together. So just an official definition for you guys to copy down of compressibility is how much the volume of matter decreases with pressure. So the more pressure you put on this little plunger here, the it's the ability of the matter to for its volume to decrease and to shrink as you depress it. So we want to look at the four variables that describe a gas, starting with pressure. Okay, Pressure is going to be in various units. You're going to see a lot of units. Um, this is where your phones and my computers are going to be come in handy because we're going to go from atmospheres, uh, millimeters of mercury, torrents, uh, torrents um, and possibly even kilopascals, which um, is a new measurement of pressure that nobody really uses, but it exists in textbooks a lot. So you're, I'll write all of those units down. most commonly going to see is atmospheres. Okay, There's also millimeters of mercury, which is when they tell you that there's a certain pressure in the air today. Millimeters of mercury is what um, is on a bar barometer and what meteorologists use. Four, probably won't see it very much, so I'm not going to worry about that. And kilopascals would be like, what they say. And atmospheres is what we're going to use in next class. So a second variable that describes gas uh, volume. Uh, to my person watching, um, what might we use for volume? What have we used for volume? Liters. Also possibly milliliters, but in terms of gas, we're going to use liters. Okay, That's what makes the most sense in our equations, and that's what the equations use when they have constants. Liters and atmospheres are going to be our most common. So, um, you guys know, we're, we can, we're going to talk about gases in terms of pressure, volume, and now temperature. You guys know Celsius, degrees Celsius. We rarely ever use Fahrenheit, but you're going to see Celsius. But in terms of gas, you and all of you watching can never use Celsius. We will be converting to Kelvin. Okay, always Kelvin. Kelvin, 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 Kelvin. I don't know how many times I can say it. Always Kelvin. Kelvin, 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 Kelvin. I don't know how many times I can say it. Always Kelvin. Kelvin, 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 Kelvin. Kelvin, 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 Kelvin. I see degrees Celsius in your gas equations, in your gas laws, anything you use gases for, you'll be in some big trouble because it's always Kelvin. Now, what if what if we're measuring we're not measuring things in Kelvin? We don't have Kelvin thermometers, so what if we have Celsius thermometers? How do we measure it? Simply take the degree Celsius and add 273 to that. And that gives us some number in Celsius. Okay, does that make sense over here? Okay, Kelvin, 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 Kelvin. What do we measure temperature in? Kelvin, yeah. And the last one, moles. Everybody loves the mole. What's our units for moles? Moles. Okay, so we're measuring an amount of gas as well. Okay, so just as a review, we've got the four variables that describe a gas. That's pressure, 
volume, temperature, and moles. If you're unsure about what any of these mean, not just their units, you want to be looking these up and, and double checking what moles mean, temperature, etc. Okay? Um, one last thing for you guys. Uh, I wanted to note that gas particles are not affected by attractive forces. So there's not, we've been talking a lot about ionic compounds and positive and negative charges. If they are attracted to each other, the attraction is negligible. They, it doesn't affect their movement. It doesn't affect um, whether they attract or repel each other. They just kind of float around and bounce off each other. They have elastic collisions. Um, we'll talk more about that. We're going to get into the kinetic molecular theory, which I have right there. This is one of those postulates. If you want to make a note of that, you certainly can. Um, and we'll talk about this some more, but this is a really important thing for when we're dealing with gases. You have to assume that in their diffusion and in their movement, they're not affected by any other gases. Question number one, why does pressure increase when you blow up a balloon? So I have a little picture of balloons on here. And you guys will see me um, use like little arrows for symbols like increases, decreases. So just keep that in mind as when you see me writing numbers like arrows like that, that's what that means. So we've got a certain number of particles in here. We've got some particles in here. Um, and so if we add, if we add particles to it, we're going to increase the volume, right? But what are we also going to do when we add particles to this? We increase the molecules. We're increasing the pressure. So what what else is increased because there's more molecules and more pressure? What more what are the molecules doing? Bouncing off. Yeah. So they're hitting these outside walls more because there's more of them. So more collisions. So you're increasing the pressure on the balloon because you've got more molecules in there bouncing all over the place and putting more pressure on the wall. Okay, So that's an increase in pressure when we blow up the balloon versus when it has like very little in it. Make sense? Okay, so question number two. Why does an aerosol can work? Um, aerosol cans come pre-manufactured with a very high pressure. They have like anywhere between, I think I wrote this down. Yeah, I did. They have a pressure inside the can of anywhere between two and eight atmospheres. The pressure uh, at sea level for us is about one. So these have a really high pressure compared to the outside environment. So what happens if there's a high pressure in here? What happens when you depress the can, when you depress the button? They disperse out because it's a lower pressure. They want to travel. It's, it's like diffusion. They want to travel from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. So they come spraying out to a lower pressure. So they, they are very relieved to be released from this high pressure environment and disperse out into a low pressure environment. Okay, so out here it's around one. Okay, it's not that they don't decrease the pressure outside, it's that they're going to, they're traveling to a, high, a lower pressure. Okay, I'm going to since I probably could have had it. Kind of like in summertime when a bunch of people are in an elevator and they all rush out to the top yeah. of it. I suppose that's a good example. When when everybody when people are crowded into an elevator, there's a lot of pressure because there's a lot of people in there, and so they rush out into a lower pressure environment. I mean, I can think of a couple of different. Let's see what else. I mean, just think about when you're depressing a syringe and it's closed, and you let it go, all the air rushes out that way because it's going to a lower pressure environment. Okay. So this specific question with the aerosol can has to do with pressure. Higher pressure in here, a lower pressure out here. So when you depress the button, they very gladly will travel out to a lower pressure environment. Question number three, why does the pressure on a sealed syringe increase when you push down on it? So let's add in my little picture that we're gonna add in the, the plunger that pushes down this. So if we're pushing down, we're adding pressure, right? So we're increasing the pressure on this specific volume. We're not changing anything about the number of particles, right? Number of moles is the same. So what are we changing about this container? The volume. Volume is decreasing, right? So if the volume is decreasing and the number of moles stays the same, what's happening in this environment? Why is there more pressure? There is less space for the molecules to bounce around. Yeah, so those molecules are bouncing around in a very tight and closed space. They're putting a lot of pressure on each other and pushing out. There's, there's a lot of molecules bouncing around. So 
to get more collisions with the shore. Okay, makes sense. Question. Why wouldn't the syringe break if you're bouncing so hard against it? Like the container, why wouldn't it break? Why wouldn't the syringe break yeah, if like, they're bouncing so hard? Why wouldn't it just like shatter? In the I would I would assume, this is a good question because my next question deals with that. Um, if you put enough pressure down and squeeze them together enough that they would have break. Okay. Or, or figure out a way to escape. They burst this little, I got a cork in here, they break that cork open. That's, there's only, like when, I, when you put it on your thumb and you push down on it, there's only so much pressure you can exert on those gases. Because those gases still take up a certain amount of space. We can only compress them so much. We'll look at that in the next question, too. So question number four. Why does a sealed can explode when heated? So if we're talking about heating it, I mean, I picture this, like if we have a can of hairspray, an aerosol can, um, what kind of warning labels come on aerosol cans? Don't put near fire. Don't put near fire. Do not incinerate. Do not leave in the car above a certain temperature. Okay? And there's a reason for that. If we add heat to this, we increase the temperature. We cause those molecules to get excited and move around a lot, right? And they, we increase collisions, right? So we're actually increasing, well, we increase the heat and we increase the collisions. What do we say about increased collisions? What does that mean also? They hit the sides harder. So what is that doing to the sides? What, what's the, it's causing more what's pressure. One of the, yes, it's what's one of the four variables? Causing more pressure to the auxiliary molecule. Yeah. So we're increasing the pressure. If we have more collisions because of we have because of a higher temperature, then we definitely have a higher pressure. So if you heat it too much and make those collisions too much, and the pressure too much, then this explodes. <laughs> because because those are so hot, those molecules are so hot. They're moving around a lot. And they're causing more collisions. And so because they cause more collisions, because they're hitting that wall more, they're putting a lot of pressure on that can that it's not built to handle. Okay? The pressure increases as the heat increases. Does that make sense? Question. What happens if you freeze it? What happens if you freeze it? Question number five. So what happens when an aerosol can freezes? Let's look at this aerosol can that has a pressure, oops, that has a pressure of about anywhere between two to eight atmospheres inside it. We talked about that can works because the pressure on the inside is higher than on the outside. But if we decrease the temperature of the can uh, and the environment around it, really, if we decrease the temperature, then we also decrease the number of collisions and molecules. And when we decrease temperature and collision, we also decrease pressure. Okay? So if we're lowering the pressure of the can inside, and we know that the reason it works is because it's two, around two to eight going out to one, and we lower that, and all of a sudden there's not, it's an equal pressure and so it's not actually going, they're not actually going to try to escape because they're in a perfectly fine pressure. They're not overpressurized because the temperature's dropped. 